Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Scott. I'm Shatay, and we're the Hazes. Welcome to the Love Haze podcast, where we believe that healing and wholeness are not just destinations. That's right, y'all. We believe they're a journey. <laughs> and here on the Love Haze, we talk about how to navigate through it. So, y'all, have you ever wondered why people fall out after they get back from a group trip? Mm. It is inevitable. We ain't friends no more. Right. If you come back from a group trip and some people ain't talking no more, or at least feel like they need a break from their folks. Yeah. So I just learned about this new term called shared reality, and it is starting to add up for me. We are going to talk about that thing a little bit and unpack it. So welcome to our Black Love Journey. Let's get into it. Let's go. Let go. So. I started following this young lady on TikTok and her name on TikTok or her page on TikTok is the friendship expert. And she was kind of she did this video where she was talking about how um, folks go on like group trips together and they fall out sometimes while they while they're there. They uh, end up coming back and and not speaking to each other outside of, you know, when you start to go on a group trip. There'll be like all these people who want to go when you first get started. And then when you get to time for the trip, like there's only a subsection of those folks who are still going. But she talked about this principle of having shared realities. Mm -hmm. And it was more about this idea that we have our friend group, but everybody doesn't share the same values. And our shared realities are really about like our ideals of what it means to have fun, like. Mm-hmm. Do I care about being on time? Mm-hmm. You know, what does rest really look like mm-hmm. for me? You, know, you got a group of folks on vacation who, you know, just want to sleep the whole time. Mm-hmm. You got a subsection of folks who like have planned all these activities mm-hmm. outside of the resorts and we're going to meet for dinner every day. We're going to meet for lunch and all those types of things. So I really want to unpack that idea of shared realities. I've heard it in some other ways uh, before, but I want to talk a little bit more about it. I'm so excited about this conversation because, <laughs> you know, we got experience on yes, group Lord. travel and I think we found actually a really great way to do it. But I do have some stories of like me gone on a trip mm-hmm. with someone and afterwards like, ooh, I need, need a little bit of space, mm-hmm. time and space. Um, I had to look up what shared realities was when you sh- presented this idea because I've not heard of it. It makes sense. It seems like it's mm-hmm. self-explanatory. But I found something from um, SciPost.org that said, um, new research in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology indicates that a shared sense of reality plays an important but overlooked role in social connections. I agree with that. A team of researchers at Columbia University and the University of Pennsylvania proposed that how people perceive the world in general was an integral part of establishing and maintaining close relationships. I've... I think where I would want to start with this conversation is why is it just like at vacation time? What are we missing? Like, how are we in friendships where we somehow might not have the same values, especially as adults? Like, I was trying to think about, is it because, you know, a lot of our friends are from college and we were, you know, a certain age and we've just evolved and now our values probably are different, you know, in your 40s versus 20s? Like, what how what is it about this specific event that triggers a realization that we don't have the share the same values? How come we don't know this? Why aren't we choosing better friends then? <laughs> I I really don't think that, and and this is gonna get to the heart of you know where where we're going with this conversation. I I really don't think it's about choosing better friends. What is it? I think it's about being able to show up in spaces where your friendships exist in that space, and you come. So I think the difference, the main difference for me is like living my life the way that I live my life. When I set out a time to have like a guy's night or we're going on a double date or something like that, we've set a time specifically for that, Mm -hmm. you know? So we set um, aside, I've I've gone to work for that day. I have Friday evening off. I've, you've made plans with your girls. I've made friends plans with my, with my boys. And we're going to a specific location at a specific time to do a specific activities, even if, uh, even if that's bowling or having a drink or whatever it is, the structure around that. Yeah. I think that when you go on vacation, you have a chance to like be around people the entire day, mm. you know, the entire set number of, of days or um, you're on a four day vacation, you know, folks, you know, 
what time they wake up. Do they want to go and work out? Mm -hmm. What time are we going to breakfast? What time are y'all going to breakfast? Do you want to meet up and go ride ATVs? All of those things. And you get to see really more about how people show up in like their everyday life. Mm -hmm. Like people who don't value being on time uh, to things. People who don't care if they eat breakfast or not. People who may just want to order in. People who don't want to spend every waking moment with you just because Listen, we're on vacation. And then if you don't share the room, sha. <laughs> Listen, you see, I'm triggered over here. Yeah, but you are. I think we've we've found a way. There's just so much, so many places we can go with this because mm -hmm. I understand the idea of a shared reality, but also like friendship doesn't mean that there won't be friction. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. that we won't disagree. And so there's just it feels like there's so many layers from evolution to disagreement to just allowing people to be who they are. I'll just say for for jumps, and maybe this will be how you navigate it. But mm -hmm. when we travel with friends. We're like, these are the things we're planning to do. You're welcome to join us or you can do whatever you want. Because at the end of the day, you have paid your money to come on this trip as well. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to do something else entirely, do that. And um, it's okay. And it's okay. And it's no judgment. Um, this is where we're going to be. Pull up or I'll see you around the resort. And that mm -hmm. is okay. It doesn't mean like, oh, they're not friends or they don't want to cooperate. Unless it's like you're here for the wedding party or something like yeah. that. But yeah. We're just on vacation together. We we create space so people can like just show up how they choose to show up, mm -hmm. and that works for us. Mm -hmm. I think that there are uh, ebbs and flows and intersectionalities as it relates to um, shared realities, right? So, uh, and a part of what we want to talk through, I think, in this episode is about like we are not the same people as other people are, but we leave room for people to show up in the space that works for them um, without having to share their exact same reality. Yeah, Like I leave space and I think that has informed the way that we choose to vacation when we go on group trips and that we share a lot of the same realities. Uh, we have these shared realities as it relates to when we want to get up or don't want to get up. And even on vacation, you may be sleeping in and I may get up and go to breakfast mm -hmm. and come back. Mm -hmm. You know, we have figured out a way and, and I figured out a way to know that my wife is going to sleep mm -hmm. on vacation. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get up probably around eight o'clock and be ready to go get something to eat. And I'll bring you something mm -hmm. back or something like that. And there's there's no fallout if you don't want to get up and come to breakfast with me or I'll get up and go work out and come back and, you know, kind of pattern my day around that. but. It's a for me, this is about figuring out how to navigate those spaces and not to have expectations of people that they can't meet. Yeah. But I wonder why the the language used is shared reality versus shared values. What do you so, think that's about? So I think sh shared reality to me is like what is actually happening in my real life. Mm. So I can have a value system that I don't meet. Right. And mm -hmm. and I think it's more about not to do not it's language for me. Language matters. Right. Yeah. So I don't want to say that um, I have this value and you don't. Yeah. So it's almost kind of diminishing to the other person to say that I have this value and you're less than because you don't have this value. Right. We just have a different we, reality. We have a different way that we show up in the world. And we so have different things that you are can important have to this us. value. Like mm -hmm. I could actually value punctuality, but mm -hmm. I just struggle to get out of the house sometimes. Correct. In Correct. reality. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I hear that. And so what does it look like when, or what does it look or feel like when you don't have shared reality? And I want to, I don't want to uh, relegate this to only friendships, but mm -hmm. what does it look like when you don't have the shared realities with family or friends? I immediately thought of family well, situations. Yeah, it, it immediately <laughs> thought of family. And I, I've talked about this before, right? With, with, my little sister. Mm -hmm, that's who, exactly what I thought uh, about. <laughs> or, we do not have shared reality as it relates to Time. being punctual. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the way that she chooses to live her life is that it'll be there when I get there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I do not live my life in that way. Mm -mm. And so if we're going to their house to do something, then I understand that. Me and my wife probably need to stop and get us a snack mm -hmm. because <laughs> it's going to be four or five o'clock before we eat. Even and though we okay. said, even right. though we said two or three, <laughs> we said it was going to be two o'clock. It's <laughs> probably going to be four or five before we eat. Yeah. So am I going to be at the folk house mad at them about being who they are Yeah, about their reality Yeah, or 
Am I going to know that that's what I'm walking into? Stop and get me a snack and go and have the fellowship that I really came for. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, when the event is here at our house, when we have family dinner here, we're probably going to cook all the stuff. Mm-hmm. We're going to start on time. <laughs> if we, we eat at 2.30. <laughs> if you walk in at 4, the food is over there. Yeah. All right. And we're going to be fully into playing games or watching movies and doing whatever it is that we do. I think it's really about figuring out, out how to exist in the same space with mm-hmm. folks that you don't necessarily have um, all of the agreements with yeah. uh, about what your realities are. And I think that our realities are also informed by the different things that we have going on in our lives. You know, do you have kids? Do you have an uh, adult parent that you're taking care of that you got to make sure is okay? Do you have other things that are on your mind? Does like time just not mean that time as a construct? Does it just not mean that much to you when you're on your off days? Mm-hmm. Right. And that's okay for some people and just not okay for me. It's important for me to, um, do what I said I was going to do as it relates to being somewhere at a certain time, starting on a certain time at a certain time or doing whatever, you know, that's my own personal uh, reality, my own personal value system. And I don't want to project that onto other people or make that a condition of being in relationship with me Mm -hmm. to a certain point. Yeah. Yeah. How do we reconcile like, or should, I guess that's what I'm processing is this something that we have to reconcile to where in order to have peace, everyone needs to have the same shared reality or is the peace just understanding that we won't and you do what we do, what we need to do for our reality and you do what you need to do for yours. You feel like, is that the I feel like go? that's absolutely it for me. It is understanding that we're, we're not going to have the same shared reality in a lot of places. But what I would like to be for you is a person who leaves space for you to show up the way that, that you show up as long as it doesn't intrude on the boundaries that I've set for myself. Mm-hmm. So if we are to travel together, then understand that, um, you know, ATVs is happening at one o'clock. Mm-hmm. We're leaving the resort. We pay for a taxi. If you show up at one thirty, then you'll be standing outside, you know, mm-hmm. and, and don't, don't be upset that we left you, mm-hmm. you know, any of those things. Like, this is the time that we set for this to happen. It's happening. Or if you don't come, I'm okay. I'm not upset that you didn't come. I'm thinking about how is this showing up? Because uh, we're more evolved now. I just want to call that out. <laughs> there, I'm sure was a time when this wasn't the case. And I would love for us to share what that felt and looked like. Uh, I'm thinking of... Gosh, am I going to just do it? I am. I went to Puerto Rico with someone who I'm actually not in relationship with anymore, but it was a girlfriend at the time. And I think probably on both ends, we needed some time apart afterwards. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think we talked for like three weeks afterwards, but it felt for me, I can't speak for her perspective. For me, it felt like she was annoyed at all the things that I was doing that Mm -hmm. on my end felt harmless. So we going out to eat and I'm asking questions like, oh, tell me more about this. Tell me more about this. And how much does this one cost? And how much versus that? Like, I don't know much about the food, mm-hmm. you know, help me. And it seemed like that annoyed her. Or if somebody got in the elevator and I'm making small talk, oh, how's your trip going? Da, 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 da. Like that bothered her mm-hmm. or like just everything bothered her. Mm-hmm. And on vacation, it's like, how, how are you so bothered out of town? And it seemed as though, She had ideas around how everyone should show up. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm getting annoyed even just talking about it. (laughs) I'm like triggered right now. (laughs) I don't think I've ever fully voiced it. um, How annoyed that made me. Like Mm -hmm. I'm just being one night I did manage to like, I just left the room. I did. There was a casino in the hotel. I went and did that for a little while. I went to the pool by myself, but it just like felt everything just felt like, it bothered her. And I know for a fact that she would go on trips with other people, like a guy she was dating at the time, for example, come back and just complain about all the things that he did it was just being himself and how, you know, I guess they didn't talk for a couple of days after. And it seemed like something like she asked what we like, what I wonder was bothering him. I was like, he probably didn't have a good time either. <laughs> I said that like, 
Like, and I just don't understand why, why, like, it felt like controlling of people's, like, being and personality. Yeah. And it's just like, it, vacation is not even supposed to be like that. Do you have any mm-hmm. situations where? Yeah, plenty. Care to share? Um, <laughs> so, you know, I went on a boy's trip uh, not too, too long ago. And just, you know, my life is just not the same as it used to be uh, for boys' trips. Like, I enjoy sleeping. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I'll even do you one better. Okay. More recently, we went to, you know, our. Uh, That's what I was thinking about. Biannual day. celebration. Uh, you know, fraternity. Conclave. Yeah. And, um, you know, what I know about going to Conclave with, with my frat brothers is, you know, we want to kick it all night and want to march and drink and grill and fry fish and all the things. And probably around about 11 o'clock, you know, I'm going to shut it down. But you didn't, sir. I didn't. Mm-hmm. But what I, what it helped me to understand is that um, my life just ain't set up like that anymore. So there was a point in time where we had these shared realities mm-hmm. where, you know, we going to clay, we out all night, we don't stop. And I remember being in Clave in New Orleans and it being 2.30 in the morning and we were walking back to the hotel. So I thought, and we pad, we walked past the hotel <laughs> and I thought maybe everybody was just drunk and they didn't recognize that we were walking past the building that we should be going in and go to sleep. Mm. And no, they were actively planning to walk past that hotel and go back to Bourbon Street. And there was a tear <laughs> in my eye right here because I could not believe that we had been walking and marching and doing all these things for all these hours. And the Negro still didn't want to go to sleep. I could do this for <laughs> hours. And I cannot. <laughs> and I cannot do this for hours. I want, my body loves to rest. When? Um, when when there there is a set and a point of time for rest. Yo, and I want, I want all of mine. Mm-hmm. And and even if it's not your amount of rest, <laughs> we don't have that shared reality, uh, it, it appears. But when there's time for rest, I want my rest. And then when it's time for me to be up, for me to be up, I'm ready to be up. Yeah. But that ain't everybody's value. And it was really no fallout. Yeah. You know, just more about like. I don't want to be at a frat house until six o'clock in the morning every day. Yeah. I mean, like there's a hotel that was paid for that I would like to go and lay my head down in the bed in. Mm-hmm. And then I come and see y'all again tomorrow. Yeah. You know, but different realities for different folks for, you know, a lot of bros, you know, that's their time to like totally be away from all of their responsibilities mm-hmm. and just kind of, you know, really and truly fraternize. And they feel like they can do that every night all night for the duration of these three or four or five days. Mm-hmm. And it is just not my value system. Yeah. I hear that. Yeah. Not for me. And what's the haze of this? If there is one, I don't know if it's the haze of reconciling that or is it the, ha- what's the haze of this whole situation? For me, it is the continual growth um, and the continual evolution of like, my values and my reality and the way that I see the world, the way that I show up in the world, the things that are important to me. There was a time when I would go on vacation, when I was just starting a vacation, especially internationally, Mm -hmm. when I wanted to go. And as soon as I put my bags down, I was ready to go hit this spot. Mm -hmm. And there was a plan for every day for some, you know, uh, activity. Mm -hmm. And we were going to check out this thing. And then we're going to see this, um, this, uh, you know, uh, nice sight and we're at ATV in this day and then we're going underwater cave diving I'm this tired, day just and that. all of those things and my life at 31 and my life at and my vacation life at 44 and 45 look totally different I'm, I uh, would much rather be somewhere like on a cabana on the beach mm-hmm. listening to the water you know, on that mm-hmm. resort that I paid for, eating them people food, drinking their drinks, mm-hmm. and not out exploring Tulum, <laughs> <laughs> riding up and down the streets in no Jeep, you no know, four wheeler. <laughs> and but I still have some of the same friendships, mm-hmm. right? And all of us have not evolved to that point or haven't gotten to the space where 
our reality looks the same as it used to. So some of those ones may look at me and be like, Scott, not much fun mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's fine for them. That's what I was going to say. The haze is, it's like, how, how do you maintain or how do you have an evolution of yourself or that person evolves and um, without it putting like undue friction on a friendship? And I guess it's a little tricky because there's a fine line. It's like, are you holding on to a friendship that really the vacation just uncovered that y'all probably should part ways? Or is it, yeah, like how do you know when it's actually, I don't know if there's an answer to this. It it varies from person to person, but is it the friend or is it life? Um, How do you know when it's which one? For me, it is always going to be like setting expectations, having conversations Mm -hmm. around like, what do you want this trip to look like? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm excited about us going on this trip together. Hey, we, you know, last time we were all on a group trip together, it was when I turned 40, Mm -hmm. you know, now I'm turning 45, like, and y'all done had kids since, Mm -hmm. you know, then Mm -hmm. y'all don't do this anymore. This thing is not happening. Life has happened to all of us over the course of those five years. Let's have a Zoom and talk about like what what all we want to do or what all we don't want to do. And it's an opportunity. Like before we went to Destin this last time, I suggested that we have a little Zoom get together, right? And it was a time for us all to like, you know, laugh and joke and talk about what we wanted to do, what we didn't want to do, what we wanted to plan for, what we didn't want to plan for. And there were folks on that call being like, I don't know if I want to get a boat for the day, mm-hmm. you know, or I don't know if we're gonna be there during that time to do this color snack challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if we're going to be able to show up for that. And I think it was okay. Yeah. Because we had the conversation rather than one person, one person like setting the expectation for the entire group and people not saying anything. Mm -hmm. There were people on there being like, "Mm, yeah, we we were having a conversation around like, who's going to be responsible for breakfast every day. And in my mind, it was going to look like, okay, this couple was going to do it on um, Sunday. It didn't work out These like folks were going to do it on Monday. These folks were going to do it on Tuesday. And I was like, everybody have a chance to get to the store, get their breakfast. And Negroes ordered out every day. Mm-hmm. And so I had an expectation. But on that call that we had before we ever went on a trip, people was like, you know, I'm probably not getting out of bed to do that. <laughs> right. right. I and got so it killed my whole little expectation. But it wasn't that I got to Florida and was sitting there hungry waiting on somebody to cook who never had intentions to do this mm-hmm, thing, mm-hmm. you know? So taking time to set the expectation for people to understand like, hey, we don't have that shared reality. Like I don't show up in life like that on vacation. I'm not getting up and cooking mm-hmm, a five-star breakfast mm-hmm, for mm-hmm, everybody, mm-hmm. which is something that I would do on vacation. Listen, talking about not having a shared reality <laughs> on that, like- Sit down somewhere and vacate, but that's his like love language. So he wants right. to be up and doing that. And I'm like, I want people to can we hire food, somebody to do this? It. And you sit mm-hmm. down next to me and have a conversation with me? Like that that's important to me. Right? You, know, you can come in the kitchen with me and we can cook and do all the things. I wanna sit down. You gonna do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Whether I'm cooking or not, you gonna be sitting down. Yeah. The way the Lord intended it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you feel like there are any other ways that we can navigate that better or the best way? I think the way we just said it and the spoiler alert or the spoiler ahead at the beginning where we just let people be who they are. Mm -hmm. Um, How you want a vacation is. Yeah. So what do you do when you have your friends that are, are. Um, that don't share that same attitude? Like, how do you have those conversations? Because we can talk about, you know, how we've decided to show up and this seems to be the best way that works for us. But what about when you go on a trip, uh, when you go on your line sister trip and somebody has every single day, every single moment, like, planned out? Do you fall in line? Or do you come back and be like, wait a minute, y'all? Something like a line sister trip when you don't get to see each other often. You just get information. And like chances are we have a uh, voted on what the agenda is going to be and mm-hmm. everybody's had a chance to weigh in. So everybody's in agreement. And if not, people have the freedom to your point to voice it earlier. Like, Hey, mm-hmm. I'm probably not going to want to do this and this. For example, we went on a line sister trip earlier this year and they laid out a proposed agenda. Like we can go on this tour. We can do this tour. We can do that. And a couple of people were like, yeah, I'm not trying to do something back to back on one day. Like mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm tired. 
And mm-hmm. I'll do one thing and that's it. And that mm-hmm. was fine. Now I will say that there is a certain line sister who we know will always be late to things. But I think even people understand that. Like that's just mm-hmm. how this person is. And it's not just her. And so I think it's just the, um, the fact that we've all evolved and like people are who they are. They can show up as whoever they are and there's still room for them here. Mm-hmm. And um I don't know if it, I can't recall in the twenties and thirties, if there was more friction around it, but at least in this space, it's just like letting people be who they are and you Mm -hmm. act according to your reality Mm -hmm. and let them act Mm -hmm. according to theirs. And then when they get there or if they decide to participate, then bet, you know? I think that goes to like our next point, which is like, how does it look and feel to have shared realities uh, with other people? And to me, this kind of, uh, and you know, I'm always going to take something in and bring it into like, how does it, how do we implement, right? Mm -hmm. How does, so uh, it may not be that um, we come to a point to where we value the same things is that our shared reality is that we enjoy being together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I enjoy having uh, all of my frat brothers together at the same time. Mm -hmm. And the shared reality is that, um, I'm going to be over there from um, nine in the morning to around about nine at mm-hmm. night. <laughs> I may go to the hotel and take me a nap in between. Mm-hmm. But I still value this space that we share. Yeah, Our shared reality is that this friendship, this relationship, mm-hmm. this thing is important mm-hmm. to me. And I'm going to show up in the space the best way that I can. It may not be on your accord. Mm-hmm. It may not be exactly on my accord. But we're going to meet in the middle because I value this space. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think the way to navigate... Um, or what it looks like is just to anchor on the the thing that you do mm-hmm. share. And I would say the fact that you're just here is important. Mm-hmm. So like the trips that we go on now, like do what you want to do. I'm just happy that you're here, mm-hmm. you know, um, mm-hmm. with line sisters, I don't care what it looks like. We're together. Like mm-hmm. if we can just anchor on and share that reality, mm-hmm. I think the rest of it, it gives, it frees up people to come and go as they please mm-hmm. do this part of it, not do this part of it, not feeling well. Because now people also have like, you know, there are, our our illnesses and like everybody's dealing with something different physically and family wise. And so our, the demands on our life are different now. So it's that people need to have the freedom to be able to tend to their lives the way that they need to. Mm -hmm. And so as friends, I think it's just important that we, you know, just value them enough and the relationship enough to like, we don't have to be joined at the hip. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this is just the case for a vacation only. It could be just, yeah, Life I'm absolutely yeah. thinking about like our family gatherings mm-hmm. and you know little little get-togethers we do over here. Like the shared reality has been that we've been in a global pandemic, mm-hmm. you know, for two and a half, almost three years, mm-hmm. and I'm happy to be able to have some space to be able to get together with my family or with my friends, and it doesn't matter to me a whole hell of a lot, you know, if you are ten minutes late. Or we uh, a toast or two in when mm-hmm. you get here. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you were able to show up to this space, right? And I'm I'm able to find joy in the midst of that and be okay with it. And so the shared reality, um, the thing that I value that we share is, you know, this time together. Yeah, and I do want to call out that we weren't always this evolved. And as recent as probably earlier this year, or even last year, it would be like, oh, why they can't be on time, but. I think it's okay to to still feel that way because mm-hmm. I think us wanting people to be on time is rooted in like I want us all to be here at the mm-hmm. start of it and experience all of it together. All so it. you yeah. not being here for the prayer on Thanksgiving when we're like holding hands and saying what we're thankful for matters. Like your absence is felt. Mm-hmm. And so it doesn't always feel like that. It can feel like pressure. Like, why do you want me to be on time when, when they know I'm not going to, but it really is rooted in like, I actually just want you to be a part of this with us too. Mm-hmm. Like, and it doesn't feel complete unless everybody is here. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so in your I, eyes. To me. Cause you know, mm-hmm. I, I want mm-hmm. the whole family together all the, end, the time. All the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't even like when people take like after dinner naps. Like it's crazy. You just be like, why aren't you in here playing games with yeah. us right now? People like trying to sleep off the I turkey. Know. Like folk whole whole ass got itis, and you be like, hey, hello, we're still here. We're here. We're doing things. 
They, or when we have family uh, movie night and like one one family movie night, everybody was asleep except for me and Amir, the nephew. Y'all I'm had a here, good time. We had an together. amazing time right. watching. And uh, then y'all share reality. Thor Ragnarok. But it's like, every y'all wake up. This is family movie night. Nah, <laughs> my dad even in rest. Oh. Being able to close my eyes. You sure. you know what? You don't have to do that. You've, sure. you've done that earlier already. <laughs> Why y'all show out every time? Nah. <laughs> Anyways, what's the music for this moment? The music for the moment, and I got to take it back to old school, dirty South, like T.I. You don't know me. See me in the streets, Shawty. You don't know me. <laughs> Why? Because you don't. Oh. You, you, you don't know people's reality of mm-hmm. how they live their lives. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. And, um, even if you think you know, you really don't have any idea like of how the way that they show up in the world is informed by, you know, the things that they have to do, the mm-hmm. stresses that they are under, mm-hmm. all of those things. So tell the truth and keep it moving, shout it. You don't know, know me. You know, but our effort is always in to get, get to, to know. know. Yeah. To get to know our people and to allow them to show up that in the way that they show up in the world and to value them in that space and to be in relationship enough to to point to where you can get to some similar ideals, mm-hmm. but not the same. So we don't have to have um, exactly um, identical shared realities to be able to be in relationship. And we ain't got to fall out with folk when they don't necessarily know us and know our um, very own realities. Amen. Amen. Well, here, here. Uh, if you are tuning in from YouTube, please give us a like and subscribe so that you can be updated when each of our newest videos drop every two weeks. If you're joining us from Apple Podcasts or Spotify, Google Podcasts, anywhere on the podcast yeah. universe, um, please rate us and leave a review. Um Help us spread the word and grow the audience and keep these conversations coming. We'd yeah. love to hear from you also. What conversations would you like to unpack with us? And like we always say, life is gone life. <laughs> life will always present us with a haze. Yeah. But we have everything that we need within us to navigate through it. That's right. And, um, you know, we appreciate you joining us this time. Thank you for joining us every time. Mm. We look forward to seeing you next time. Mm-hmm. And remember, you're not alone. Yes. Join us and we're going to navigate this thing together. All right. Peace, y'all. Holla.